Hey guys, it's Mike here. I'm back with another video. And today we're inside the house. As you can see, I'm in front of my fireplace. And there's a reason for that. It's a wood burning stove clean out day. My wife and I supplementally heat our house with a wood burning stove. And what we're left with is a ton of ash. It's as a byproduct. We burn wood, we get heat, and we're left with ash. And that's what we're getting rid of today. But I want to talk about what we can do with this stuff. Uh, usually we're left with a lot of ash and a little bit of charcoal, and both of these things are really important and really great to add to the garden for the next growing season. We're still in the winter today, but we can still be thinking about the, the coming growing season uh, in the future. And that's exactly what we're doing with this byproduct today. And I'm gonna go over some of the, the, the pros and the cons of using wood ash in your garden and soil to as a, as a nutrient or a conditioner for your soil. So let's jump right into this thing. Okay, so I'm just going to clean out this fireplace here. There's quite a bit of ash, although it doesn't look like it. It goes pretty deep. There might be four or five inches of ash in here. I just wanna show you guys while we're right at the source what this stuff is and what it looks like. So this is the wood ash itself. It's very light and fluffy. If you've ever dealt with ash before, you know there's not much weight to it and there's not much substance to it. It's very dusty and it has very, very fine particles, uh, which is gonna be brought up again in the future when we get out to the garden as to why this stuff is so readily available and water soluble when you add it to soil. So as I clean this out, I just wanna quickly go over some of the benefits of using uh, wood ash in the garden. Uh, number one is it contains a ton of nutrients. It actually has 12 out of the 15 nutrients that plants need to grow. 10% of that is potash or potash as the name derives. Long before uh, there was chemistry and, and, and modern science, our ancestors knew that there was value to this stuff and they would make it by burning wood in pots. And, and they would then use that in their garden or in their agricultural settings to grow plants and to, to fertilize their soils. So they knew that potash had value agriculturally. Thus, they called it potash. And then that translated to potash, or and then down the line becomes potassium, which in the name, in the spelling of potassium, it has potash in it, which is one of the three macronutrients or building blocks for growing plants. That's the N is nitrogen, the P is phosphorus or phosphate, and the K is potassium. So this uh, this wood ash here contains zero N because we're burning all the nitrogen off in the process of making a fire. It has one P, which is the, the phosphorus or the phosphate, and then it has three K. So it has more potassium than any of the other three major macro building blocks, which is an awesome form of potassium to, in an organic way to add to your soil. So that's the first and, and the biggest uh, pro to using it. It also has a bunch of trace uh, micronutrients um, and, and different types of metals such as iron, manganese, boron, copper, zinc. There's a ton. I'll, I'll list them down below in the, in the description so that it's easier for you guys to get to. But there's a lot of trace minerals and metals that, that plants also need to grow. 25% um, of all of this is calcium carbonate which increases the soil alkalinity. And that's actually one of the drawbacks, or it could be a positive, depending on your situation. We'll go over a little bit more of that outside when we get to the garden. Uh, but the last thing I wanted to talk about, which is a great part or great thing about wood ash, is that it has a very, very fine particle size, which makes it readily available and reacts very quickly once mixed or put into the soil. Applying small amounts to the wood ash can help a lot or it can harm the soil chemistry based on the alkaline properties that it has. So let's go outside, let's take this, this wood ash that I collected here, and let's see what we can do at the garden. So I'm out here in the garden area, the little orchard section of the backyard, and I have the ash that we collected from the indoor wood burning stove. And this is a great opportunity to just go over really quickly about some of the benefits or possibly drawbacks of using wood ash in your, your orchard or garden space. Um, and that is the, the biggest or the lowest hanging fruit on this one is the soil chemistry, uh, specifically the soil pH. Now, if, for those of you that aren't uh, um, familiar with what pH is, it's a scale uh, from one to 12 
and seven is neutral, right in the middle. So anything lower than uh, seven is going to be acidic, and anything higher than seven in this pH scale is going to be alkaline. Now, why does this matter? Well, plants, certain plants, take up nutrients and thrive in different pH ranges. For example, uh, blueberries love acidic soil conditions. They need acidic soil conditions or else they won't do well. Um, tomatoes like slightly acidic, closer to like 6.8 uh, to 7. So more like uh, neutral, slightly acidic. So using that pH scale you can determine where or what kind of amendments you want to add. Now with all that being said, and I hope that made some sense, uh, wood ash is going to increase the pH of your, your soil. It's alkaline. So when, you, when you're mixing in wood ash into your soil, you have to keep in mind where your soil lands on that pH scale, and that's where you can use some at-home tests, or you can take a sample and send it into the lab, and they'll tell you, usually um, your, your, your local universities or, or um, different agricultural you know, offices, they'll be able to help you find a good place where you can get a pH test on your soil, and that's what you definitely want to do before you start adding this stuff. I have another point that I want to go over, and that's going to be at the outdoor fire pit, the place that we usually hang out and have uh, campfires, bonfires, and uh, generally just hang out and have a fire outside. So let's go over there and I'll explain why that's important. Okay guys, I'm, uh, I'm in front of the outdoor fire pit now, and this is just where we hang out, have leisure fires, burn, burn wood just to relax and get together with friends. So there's actually a better source of, of wood ash than, than your indoor fire pit, or at least it'll have more nutrient dense components in this, and there's a reason for that. Generally on an outdoor fire pit, we're burning sticks, twigs, branches, smaller diameter stuff, and generally on an indoor fireplace, you're burning split logs and heartwood from a, a large diameter tree. Um, the, the heartwood has less nutrients in it than the sticks and twigs, just naturally how the trees grow. They send nutrients up from the ground out to their branches and leaves, and that's typically what we're burning here. So in theory, there's more nutrient burnt components in an outdoor fire pit. Now there's two things to that. Number one, you need to make sure that when you're harvesting ash from your outdoor fire pit, you're getting um, a freshly burned ash. You don't want anything that's been sitting, has been rained on. All Once this ash gets wet, all the nutrients are basically inert. The, the, the chemical compound of the ash reacts with the water, it, it leaches out that fine particle size, they clump together, it becomes a lot less uh, productive in your garden space if you're using ash that's already been wet and rained on and snowed on and all that stuff. And number two, you want to make sure that the outdoor fire pit that you're harvesting ash from is only sticks, trees, and branches. You don't want to have any um, you know, sketchy items that might have been burned in there. Like I know in my case, we'll burn whatever we have around. If we throw a pallet in there, we might throw a pallet, you know, if we have some scrap wood from construction projects, we might throw some of that in there. Now, some of that can be pressure treated, different types of chemicals. None of this stuff we want in our garden, especially an organic garden. So you need to make sure that burning uh, any or, or using any ash from your outdoor wood burning fireplace, then you're going to be only getting good organic inputs that you put in to burn. And that's, I can't drive that home enough. Uh, this I wouldn't use any of this material. Number one, it's been rained on a ton. I haven't cleaned it out in about a year. But also, I couldn't tell you what we burned in this, um, you know, in terms of wood sources. We don't burn tires or plastic or anything like that, but you just never know what's in pressure treated wood. I know that there's chemicals in that or pallets or some of the stuff that we burn. So I just wanted to drive that point home. Use an outdoor fireplace. It has a great, it's a great source, but be careful about what's in there. All right, guys, so I just wanted to explain one more thing before we go over and apply this wood ash to the apple trees over there. And that is that when you're using or thinking about wood ash, think about the wildfires that happen in nature uh, in, in the, the West Coast, Californias, Oregon, things like that. And then think about or look Google search pictures of the, the forest ground after a fire. This green, deep green lush 
uh, explosion of growth occurs uh, right on that charred material. Sometimes there are certain mushrooms that grow right out of the charred material, and that is uh, a feat of nature. There's a, there's a reason why these the, the plants grow so well after a wildfire, and I believe that it has to do with the burnt wood ash, the biochar, and the charcoal that's available after a wildfire on the forest floor. You know, the microbes love the charcoal, they grow inside of that. The, the, the wood ash provides potassium and mi micro macronutrients for new plant life. And the biochar offers a great soil structure for water penetration and water retention. So there's a lot of different reasons why wood ash and charcoal and the remnants of a fire can really be helpful for plant growth and vigor. And that's what we're trying to replicate or add to our soil here in the backyard garden without burning the whole backyard down, of course. So let's go over to the apple trees and let's apply some of this stuff and I'll show you you guys how I do that. Okay, so now we're in front of the uh, the apple tree. We're below one of my apple trees here and I want to just demonstrate how I apply wood ash to the trees. And uh, basically what I have is my my chicken feed scoop. That's all that's all I use and you really don't need a lot of this stuff guys. It's it's dusty. You might want to wear a mask when you're doing this. Um, I'm, I'm not doing it too much. I'm only going to be applying it to a couple trees that I know uh, need a little bit of an alkaline boost in the soil. So that's these apple trees here. I did my soil test. I found that it's a little bit more acidic than I'd like. And I'm just adding one scoop and I'm really just kind of sprinkling it around the, the apple tree here. Um, nothing too crazy, not a lot. And I'm, I'm, I'm distributing it evenly across a wider area where the, I believe the roots are underneath. So again, we're not adding a lot. This stuff is pretty concentrated. Once it rains, this is gonna this is gonna soak down into the soil, and it's gonna help change the pH. It's gonna increase it, and then provide a bunch of those macronutrient or micronutrients to the apple tree. Um, number one macronutrient that's being introduced is the potassium, and I know that the potassium is going to increase the size and the quality of the fruit that this apple tree will produce. So, just like that, guys. That's it. We just distributed it. If you want, if you have water, our water's off this time of year. It's freezing cold outside. But if you do have water on, I'd give it a sprinkle, wet it down so you know that it's not going to blow away with the wind. And that's that's it. It's just as easy as that, guys. It's not a rocket science here. So, all right, guys. So that's the, really the end of the video on wood ash. I'm I'm really happy you guys came along, and we learned a little bit more about wood ash, the pros, the cons, why we use it, and how to use it in your garden and fruit and fruit tree space. So. With all that being said, thanks a ton for coming along on this one. Hit that thumbs up if you like this video. If you made it this far into the video, you get a gold star. And go ahead and subscribe if you wanna see more from me. I'm trying to put out as much content as possible. We're also on Instagram now. We're putting up reels and posts and stories on Instagram. That's a great place to catch us between videos. I can't upload videos all the time because I do work a full-time job and busy schedule life keeps going. But if you guys want to see more from us, we put Instagram stuff on Instagram more often than on YouTube. So check us out there. That's Twigs Homestead on Instagram. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for coming by.